gonna lie to you. Res Rosa feels like a fever dream. <laughs> this is so much shit. Welcome back, everybody, to the One Piece binge review by the Panic Brothers. I am Simon, accompanied by Josue, as per usual. Well, today, we are discussing uh, something that we've been kind of dreading to discuss for a while, just because of sheer length of the arc, and that is Dress Rosa. Which, funny enough, uh, Josue, remember it, this all takes place in one day. Um, <laughs> it's the second longest arc in all of One Piece. This video will probably come out in two parts. This is the first part of the discussion. Well, we probably stop talking around the point where Usopp transforms all the toys into humans. That being said, um, remember this is a spoiler-ridden binge review. So if you haven't seen or read Dress Rosa, please exit the video now because we will clearly and obviously be talking about things that happen in this arc. So without further ado, if you like the comments, I mean, sorry, <laughs> if you like the content, <laughs> if you like the content, and want some more subscribe comment like let us know what we should be doing next enjoy the video let's get to it i'm not gonna lie to you best rosa feels like a fever dream <laughs> this is so much shit happening at once and i like this arc a lot too i really like this arc but it, it when i look back on it i'm like a lot dude imagine reading it week by week when it was coming out it was, dude, the Dress Rosa lasted from, I want to say, the beginning or the end of, I want to say beginning, yeah. I think it was beginning of college all the way to the end of my junior year. So three, majority of my college experience, three years, was just me reading Dress Rosa. That's all that was happening in One Piece, just Dress Rosa. That shit was fair, fucking yeah. long. To be fair, the majority of your adult life has been all Wano. Oh. <laughs> actually, wow, yeah. Now you put it like that. That's actually... <laughs> wow. Didn't even think about it like that at all. You're completely right about that. Huh. <laughs> Wano has been going on since we both graduated college. So... Damn, my whole... Yeah, my adult life is really just Wano. <laughs> anyway, though. Um, <laughs> Dress Rose was going on through my whole college experience. And reading it week by week, it felt so painfully fucking slow um i like it a lot don't get me wrong i like the arc but i really do think the reason why i felt so painfully slow for me personally is i think the coliseum Termin arc reading it week by week was not fun in my personal opinion i think out of all the tournament arcs if you look at hunter hunter naruto like any anime <laughs> dragon ball z even i have this one at my absolute bottom dude i really don't like this tournament arc at all like the tournament part about it, everything else about the arc i like a lot it felt like, uh, like, and I even feel weird calling it like a side quest in a video game. Like, because <laughs> I've, I, even I've seen many side quests, side quests in games that I've played that are more interesting than this. Because it just, it just felt like it was just thrown in there last second. Mm -hmm, and it mm -hmm. probably wasn't. Pro knowing Oda, it probably wasn't. Yeah, you definitely planned it. But that's the feeling that it gives off, where it's just sort of like, Damn, I low-key feel like putting in a tournament. I remember going into Dress Rosa, you told me that there was going to be a tournament. That yeah. this was a tournament arc. And I was like, whoa, that sounds fire. And that's when you said, oh, but there's a whole bunch of people coming in that you don't know. And I'm like, well, that kind of makes sense. It's a tournament arc. Mm -hmm. It's not like we knew everybody in every single one of the Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball tournament arcs, yeah. right? But mm -hmm. it was still fire. So I'm like, oh, dope, I don't care. No, this is not a tournament arc. It's mm -hmm. not a tournament arc mm -hmm. at all. This is, this is a huge ass arc with many moving pieces, and one of them just so happens to be a very battle royale type battle royale, but a half ass attempt at one. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong and how you felt about it, but for you, like getting into the arc. There's a while until it pops up, the Colosseum fights. Like there's a there's a good chunk before we get there. So as you're reading it, you're thinking, what the fuck is a tournament? And then when it pops up, you're like, oh, yeah. wait, it's so like this isn't part of the main story, I feel like. This is just kinda like happening while like everyone else is also doing other things. Cause mm -hmm. out of all the straw hats, Luffy's the only one in the tournament. <laughs> yeah. Everyone else is doing their own thing right now. It's not even like Luffy. He's dressing up as 
What was the, Lucy? Was it yeah, Lucy? Lucy yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Lucy. Yeah, which I thought was hilarious, but I I feel like this is gonna be the only appropriate time to bring it up, and so I'm just gonna have to bring it up right now. What? Uh, the one element of this entire tournament part of Dress Rosa that I actually was super invested in was uh, Chen Zhao. Chen Zhao I like his character the, a lot. The, the definitive part of the tournament to me. Mm-hmm. His backstory was phenomenal, and I I love how he kind of got brought back into his senses as soon as Luffy kind of aimed his Fix his shit. <laughs> on the yeah. That's when I was... Everything about Chen Zhao, his backstory, especially his fight against Garp, and like learning how it happened, mm-hmm. uh, it's phenomenal. Like, it's it's the Garp thing face. that makes me like Chen Zhao a lot. Because I feel like we never really hear much about Garp in his prime, so it's really dope to meet someone who Garp fucked up in his prime. So I agree with you. I like him a lot for that. Also, this is kind of this is gonna be really stupid, but I really like characters that that have Don in their name. For some Why? reason, the, the second fuck? I hear Don, you're like, like oh, I like this. Like, <laughs> it's sort of like like you better be good and you better live up to that that title, Don. Like, so Don is like. Did you ever watch Pokemon? About Don Pokemon. Remember, like the, the main the main girl who traveled with Ash. Her name is Dawn. Is that how you felt when you first met Dawn? Oh, Dawn. D- oh, D-A-W-N. I thought it was a D A W N. I'm like, bro, I never think that when I see any Dawns. I don't know just saying that. I don't know. His, his that's Dawn. What, that's why I'm saying who. Yeah, yeah, I got that. But I was wondering, like, who the fuck in this arc has a D A W N name, bro? Like to me, it's like you don't you don't get that <laughs> title of Dawn unless you're that guy. That guy, like, yeah. So, yeah, and so when I see his backstory and I see the way that people were treating Chen Zhao in the arc, I'm like, oh, you are that guy. Good to know. I like that. Mm-hmm. And then also him having Conqueror's Hockey, like, that was competing with Luffy's. So I was like, damn, this dude's fucking real. Exactly. Like, like all these little elements, it's like, all right, I really mess with you in this arc. And I, like, I remember I'm going back to the, your point when you were like, you, there's going to be so many people getting introduced that you don't know who's who, really. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, who's who's a character, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, like having that little backstory made like it gave me the most i, I mess with him the most out of yeah. all the characters out of all the ones that i met um in the coliseum segment i liked bartholomew a lot i like him yeah, I, I knew you were gonna go that bart way. is one of my favorite characters in the show just because the way we, they introduced him he seemed like he was gonna be a problem like he seemed like a fucking animal like everyone's like oh he eats humans like He's a fucking beast. Like, there was all these rumors about him. And then we meet him, and when he first hears that Luffy is in Dressrosa, he fucking freaks out, and he starts fanboying. And, like, the reason why I like him so much is because I really do feel like Bart is just us if we were in the One Piece universe. (laughs) The dude's obsessed with Luffy and the Straw Hats, and I find that so fucking funny. And uh, his fruit's really cool, too. I I like the berry berry fruit a lot. I think it's like a pretty OP fruit to have. Overall, I think his character is really cool. And I liked how he, he was like the, the main like anti-hero of the Coliseum. Everyone hated him. Like they all rooted against him. Like, oh fuck you, Bar, fuck you. Like they all were against him. I like that a lot. I think he was a really cool character. And I'm glad that he's still like relevant, especially now. Spoilers for Wano. Uh in the chapter that just came out last week or two weeks ago, Shanks mentioned uh Bart messing up his territory. So it's really cool that he's still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really. Well, this is getting ahead, but I'm really happy that everyone who does get introduced in this arc, that event, like, finds a way to still be relevant for later arcs. We, there's so many times that we are introduced to characters in many of the arcs of One Piece that, oh, it's cool to get to know you, but I know you're only going to be relevant for this specific mm-hmm. part of the story. We'll get to her probably the next part of Dressrosa once we finally get to the ending of Dressrosa. But knowing that these are characters that will eventually come back, mm-hmm. a lot of the other participants of the tour of the tournament mm-hmm. makes me. It, 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 I just love Oda for that. That he's he's finding ways to not only make these characters relevant, but also use them in a way that also boosts up Luffy's status. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's right. why I thought it was really genius for him to um, make a grand fleet. Because there's so many of these characters where I feel like it's going to be impossible to make them individually contri- 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 contribute. Contribute. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> to make them individually uh, contribute to Luffy's like success. So 
it was probably better just to make them a grand fleet. That way, you know, maybe at the end of the story, if there's like one giant battle, you can just bring them all in once and it makes sense. It doesn't feel random that all of them would come in randomly like that, you know? So I like that he did that a lot. But, um... Hey, now that, now that, since we're still... I might as well just keep on sticking to the, to the tournament portion of the Dress Rosa arc. Yeah, there's still a lot more to talk about, so let's keep talking about it. Yeah. I, I, I am really curious, though, because you are reading it week by week. Mm -hmm. But what was it like seeing Sabo come back? Are you so, for as a reader? Right, rewinding back even further, um... The Coliseum's main goal was Devil Fruit, the Mera Mera no Mi, right? That alone had a lot of people going hype. We we're like, oh, they found it? Holy shit. So then people started theorizing, like, what if, like, Luffy can find a way to, like, eat it and, like, he'll be, he'll be both, like, fire and rubber. <laughs> there was a lot of theories on that. And then you also had, um, Burgies, Jesus Burgies, that's his full name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had him showing up from Blackbeard's crew, which made people go even crazy. Like, oh, shit, he's going to try to steal it. And that makes sense, like, Blackbeard's trying to, like, take all these fruits. So I was like, oh my god, like, this is perfect. Not once did I think, probably other people in the community did, but never once did I think, you know, Jesus is there, Luffy's there trying to get the Mirror Mirror to me. Never thought, what if they just brought back Sabo and he tried to get it too? Didn't even cross my mind. And when um, they finally revealed it, and he appears, and Luffy's hysterically crying, like, oh my god, I thought he was dead. It made sense, but a part of me was like, I don't know how I feel about this. It's been like, the last time I saw you was years ago, literally years ago. And like, mm -hmm. through a flashback, and you died back then. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I, it, it's like running into your like, uncle, when like, last time you saw me, you were four. And, he, and he's like, last time I saw you, you were so big. Oh my god, do you remember me? And you're like, no. <laughs> Last time I saw you, I whopped your ass. <laughs> you remember that? We, we had an intimate moment. You remember that? Uh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> but that's what it felt like. I was like, oh, Sabo's back. But like, I didn't, I didn't, I saw people freaking out in the community. People were crying in the community. Be like, oh my God, yes, he's back. Like people were freaking out. I'm like, really? Like, all we had was a flashback. Y'all fuck with him like that? I don't know this guy at all. So I felt iffy about it. And then when he, when he wins the Mara Mara no Mi, I told you this in person. That's when I was like, fuck this character. I hate this character. Because for a minute, it just felt like Oda was just making Sabo come back and replace Ace. And I hated that yeah. so much. You're just this, you're just another brother now who has the same devil fruit. And that's it. Like, he just gets the devil fruit. He doesn't really do much else in Dressrosa besides hold back the Marines from, like, interfering with Luffy's fight. And that's it. So, like, when Dressrosa ends, I feel like I just... I saw Sabo come in, and I saw him leave with the fruit. How much was I feel about this? Fuck that guy. Uh, I, I, <laughs> so, so I had a much different experience because because I hated I hated the flashback, and I completely hate this feeling. And I think a lot of people in the community can agree with this that Sabo just feels very shoehorned in. Yes, and that. His inclusion in the overall story is probably one of the bigger negatives of One Piece, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily Sabo himself, just like, oh, the writing behind him. Mm -hmm. that, that is annoying. And I felt it heavy in, in this entire arc because I remember asking you, and I remember in, ever since I was getting into One Piece with you, mm -hmm. Sabo to me was one of the biggest mysteries because, because <laughs> like everywhere jump I went... <laughs> In Jump Force, in uh, the cover of Pirate Warriors, I think four or three, I think three actually. Mm -hmm. Like, and I just always see this character everywhere, and I'm like, okay, he has to be huge. Yeah. In one piece, he can't be this relevant. Be yeah. A, such, a, such a huge, and I'm here thinking he has to be either B because he looks so much like so, uh, like uh, Sanji to me. Mm -hmm. I was like. And I know it's probably like an idiot thing to say right now, but but think of it from the perspective of someone who has yeah, yeah, yeah. very little knowledge of One Piece. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm here thinking, okay, like back in the East Blue Saga, I'm all, all I can think of Sabo has to be Sanji's family. <laughs> Sanji, you can find me too. That doesn't be a big arc with Sanji, and I'm like, yo, that's where Sabo comes up. <laughs> yeah, Sabo. Yeah, Sabo is. Is Sanji's like <laughs> or something? And not only that, 
he has to be one of the biggest bads in the series. He is the big bad. You right? thought he was a villain? I thought he was like the villain. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it's so like, off. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that like I'm disappointed that that didn't happen because yeah. that's just a theory. Like, all I'm saying is that from the perspective of someone who's just getting into One Piece and you see Sabo everywhere, you're here thinking that he's gonna be this huge, crazy dude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no, you only see him for a couple of chapters, shoehorned into this story, halfway through the story in Marineford, when he first gets introduced. Uh, and then he comes back 200 something chapters later, where. He's not really. He's just a like, high and by. It's just that's it. You just you just see him flex his powers, and that's really it. Yeah. And spoilers for everyone who is not caught up to the current moment in the current point in One Piece, which is uh, ten fifty six. But Sabo is only just now getting. Rubbed. Yeah. Now we're actually like getting some real Sabo shit. <laughs> yeah, some real Sabo like moments that is making everyone like and and, and I know you mm -hmm. where now you're just liking Sabo. Yeah. Just of one chapter alone because they finally actually gave him some real character. Like, okay, this is what he's doing. And it actually made me go like, okay, I actually fuck with this now. It's not just him showing up, showing off his powers, taking a fruit and walking away. It's more so he stands for something now. I like that. Exactly. And so I I there's a lot of things that I like about Dressrosa, and I'm not even that mad about Sabo being in the story. I think, I, I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are really, like, blown away by the revelation of Sabo coming back. Like, you, I think you mentioned that already, but, like, this is just so weird. Yes, especially, because we haven't even mentioned it yet, the, the most criminal thing was when they brought him back in Dressrosa, they also touched on his backstory of what happened. Oh and my God. that amnesia shit was some of the worst shit Oda's ever done, in my opinion. Giving Sabo amnesia is way too coincidinky, bro. I hate that. Like, the reason why he never reached out to Luffy. The reason why, like, he never, like, went back home or, like, hit contact with anyone he was still alive is because he had amnesia. Dude, that... And then he gets his memories back when he sees that Ace died what a what a unique timing that is oh that shit sucked the first time i read it. i was like this is a horse shit yeah it's it's really the 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 trope of memory loss in stories unless it's like a really big focal point of the story itself it's just so stupid. so dumb it's a vehicle to just excuse yourself from getting into plot holes it's up there with uh it was all a dream yeah, that, those two are the worst, bro. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, so I, was, I, will, I will say I'd much rather have this than Luffy saying I always dreamt of Sabo. <laughs> Sabo was never oh. really there. I dreamt in this whole time. That would be way worse. Yeah, or... or yeah. <laughs> I can't even think of it. Like, I, I, I don't know, dude. I'm at, uh, the only thing I can possibly think of is if there was a dude who had like the ability to bring back the dead or something. Like that was their devil fruit. And they brought back Sabo. That actually happened already. I feel like no, no one's come back from the dead, have they? I don't think that's. I don't think that's I'm saying, was there ever a devil fruit like that in Thriller Bark? Was that a devil fruit? I don't think so. I mean, like, yeah, you can bring it back from the dead in Thriller Bark, but like, they're not. They're not completely back. It's just their soul, or their shadow, for, for that matter. Like remember the the samurai oh, okay. from Wano, like that example. He's not really fully back, yeah, but he's yeah. back. Yeah, it's like that. Uh, gotcha. Well, regardless, I say all that to say that it was just Sabo's inclusion in Jess Rosa is both to me good <laughs> and horrible at yeah, the same yeah. time. It could it could have so. been executed better but it's not the make or break of this sh it, it's not the make or break of dress rosa just because simply enough dress rosa has so much going on where it's kind of hard to find one specific thing and make it ruin the whole thing there's so much going on in the background so you can kind of easily just move past the sabo stuff yeah. i um that's, that's just luffy's part of dress rosa yeah i was gonna say um the the, the straw actually split into three if um if for people who don't remember don't remember how the art goes down uh, there's one group that tries to mess up the factory. Luffy gets separated from that group, and it's like Zoro and then uh, Frankie doing that. You have um, 
uh, what's face Nami, Chopper, and I believe Usa. Sanji. Sanji. No, no San- Sanji ori- originally goes with um with Zoro, Frankie, and Luffy to break down the factory. Oh, okay. So I got the I got the order mixed up. Gotcha. Yeah. Then um Robin and Law are escorting the uh escorting Caesar. Which is I love that couple a lot. Um, and then for Augur, Law, and Robin need to make babies. That's all I'm saying. Okay, I, 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 I didn't say that that far. But um, the other group, the other group, the final one is protecting the Sunny, right? So, <laughs> I uh, all the loopy stuffs happening. But while that's happening, I liked a lot. Like one of my favorite parts is the whole Law Doffy um, Fujitora interaction. I was like, this is heat. Because they all meet up, right? And according to the Law's plan, everything's going to be perfectly fine. Doffy, at the beginning of this arc, gave up and resigned as a warlord. Cool. He lost his, like, privilege to get backing from the Marines, right? Two, the rest of the crew is about to fuck up the factory. And three, I'll give up Caesar, and I'll be fine. But when he pulls up, there's Fujitora with Marines, and there's Doffy with him side-by-side gonna double tag-team Law. And that's when you find out Doffy's not just any other dude. How did you feel about that reveal that he was a fucking celestial dragon? That, that, so that part to me didn't affect me as much weirdly enough. It was just how he was as a kid that messed me up more than anything. It was not necessarily that he was a celestial dragon growing up. It was just like, this dude... It, like I love that I have a better perspective now on celestial dragons and how they operate and how they are and what they think mm-hmm. because of Dolphy because Dolphy was fucked screwed up yeah extremely I, I I agree with you I think that's more important than just the reveal but the reveal still <laughs> fucked me up because I was <laughs> not expecting that when he said that I was like this whole time it all adds up that's why no one touches this dude it's not that he's just a warlord this dude is untouchable. That shit shook me. But like you said, his backstory explains so, so much of why he is the way he is. And his backstory is a big reason as to why I think he's the best villain in One Piece. Because he truly does not care if you are not on his side. Yo, the way that he interacted with his father, everything that happened with his dad, how merciless Dolphy was, I... I always assumed that Doffy was going to be one of the better villains of One Piece. Has to be. He should have been in Jump Force, in my opinion, over Sabo. But, <laughs> but besides the point, besides the point, that backstory cemented it for me. And not only yes. that, I, I, I'm not sure. Was this the moment also that we get into the backstory between Trafalgar and? No, that's was way that later when um when Law's about to yeah. fight him. Right. Okay. That's what I, that's what I thought. So I won't I won't touch on that just yet. But Doffy's backstory and overall presence this entire one of the main consistent elements of dress rosa was still finding ways to make Dolphy feel so intimidating Mm -hmm. in ways that despite his status as a yonko kaido never felt that way to me nah Dolphy was that guy that i'm like terrified of this yes dude legitimately whenever he got that like angry vein in his like head i was like oh he's fucking pissed he looks actually terrifying. And I think what's even what's even cooler about um Doffy is that remember that whole speech he had in Marine Ford? Like uh, um yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. good and evil is like subjective. I feel like this background even gives that more like more meat to it. Like, okay, now I understand why he thinks like that. Cause this man grew Literally up being told I'm a god, I'm untouchable, I'm a king. Then it gets all taken from him, and then when they try to find peace, well, his dad does at least, the villagers turn on him. So from his view, he's like, there is no good or evil. Fuck that. It's winners and losers. Fuck it. It's insane. I love that. I completely agree with you. Uh, I didn't even think of that perspective until you just said that, and I'm like, yeah, it makes complete, complete <laughs> sense. Uh, I, I, and going back to that little moment between the three of them on uh, Green Bit, right? Green Bit was the mm-hmm. name of that, of that part. Mm-hmm. Fujitora, an awesome dude. Character. Fujitora is fucking terrifying to fight, by the way. <laughs> like, oh my God. When he brought in those meteors and the gr- oh, dude, I was like, holy fuck. 
Mm. After, I, I don't know when it was, but uh, I never watched Dress Rosa. I only read it. I never really watched any parts of it. So, like, I'm only seeing what he does. But mm -hmm. it was only when I watched One Piece Stampede, the movie, where mm -hmm. everyone in the One Piece <laughs> universe is there pretty much, <laughs> that I saw Fujitora's power really shine. And I'm like, dude. This is a problem. This guy's a problem. Yeah, yeah this guy's a problem. And I know it's not canon, but it's still a good example of what he can do. Problem. Yeah. The fact yeah. that Law, like, really held his own for a bit against those two, really, dude, shout out to him, because I feel like that was not an easy task, bro, handling both at the same time. That shit's crazy. But I did like how it could have been simple as Oda writing it so that Fujitora was, like, a, a Kainu type or a, um, or a Green Bull type, where, like, he works side and side with Doffy perfectly in harmony. But I did like how he introduces the factor that Fujitora has actual good morals. And he actually doesn't like Dolphy. If it was up to him, there would no be there like there wouldn't be no warlord system. I like that a lot, because he easily could have had like any Marine who like side by Dolphy called day, but each one of those three characters in that segment, Law, Dolphy, and Fujitora, have very different motives and personalities. And I like that a lot. It, 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 it reinforces this idea that, like, I don't want to think that every Marine is the same. Like, yeah. And I, I feel like this could have easily fallen down that path where, oh, that, that person's a Marine. That means that they're an asshole. That means that they're the villain. Mm -hmm. But no, there's characters like Fujitor who are in this extremely gray area, very similar probably to Garp, right? Where mm -hmm. Garp is not a bad person, but he's a Marine. Right? Yeah. And he just stand with all of the, with everything that the Marines also do. So, Fujitor, that element of him, I love that he's not just here as a sort of, this could have easily also gone the way of spoilers ahead as well for Wano, but the marine presence in Wano, stupid, mm -hmm. horrible, horrible element of the entire saga. This could have fallen down that path similar to what we see in Wano, but it didn't. It felt like the marines here, well, represented by Fujitor played a vital role in the entirety of the story and he was a consistent problem they were everywhere like they were everywhere on the island the strats have to be careful getting caught by them yeah so fujitora is just beautiful writing by oda amazing honestly amazing i love his character also the introduction of how he, i think by the way before i get to fujitora's interrupt uh introduction i think dress rosa one of the best things about it is it shows how good oda got to, like in writing characters because I feel like Dress Rosa, he had to introduce like 20 different, 30 different characters. And I feel like majority of them have really, really good introductions. Like, you have Dawn's introduction sure. is good. Bart's introduction is good. Sabo's reintroduction is pretty meh. But it's not the worst. Bringing back Jesus, I was like, holy shit, like, he's here now. A character to bring back, too. What was of that? all characters, like, Jesus was a really oh, yeah. great character. Like, to bring back of all the characters it could have been blackbeard but i love the fact that he went with oda went with a character that we probably would have never expected but still represents blackbeard and you like it kind of makes blackbeard's presence felt in this arc mm -hmm. without blackbeard being there and mm -hmm. i thought that was phenomenal and you have even people like elbaf though the word from elbaf his introduction i liked a lot too but the my favorite one is definitely fujitora i love how he's like a blind guy gambling they're taking advantage of him luffy's like being luffy is like they're cheating. <laughs> and he helps them win the money. <laughs> and Fujitora's like, oh, thanks, appreciate it. And he sees how strong he is. And Luffy says, who are you? And Fujitora's like, I, I think it's best both of us we don't get into that right here. I like that a lot. That was a dope introduction. It feels very reminiscent of uh, Luffy's introduction with Blackbeard, in my opinion. Mm -hmm, Except, mm -hmm. obviously, both go a different little path, but it's just really funny to me that Luffy consistently finds himself in situations like this, mm -hmm. where pretty much Luffy should never go to a bar, because the second he goes to a bar, he's going to meet the next major <laughs> character in his life. And so just stop going to bars, dude. Just stop it. You're doing yourself a disservice. I, I have to mention, though, because we we're dancing around this element, mm -hmm. but... I guess the part that solidified Dress Rosa to me, because um, I'm always waiting for that moment. One Piece consistently hits that for me, and w which is why it's one of the the like up there with Dragon Ball Z, Hunter Hunter to me as some like, my, one of my favorite stories to have ever existed in anime and manga. Is that One Piece consistently hits these marks where I'm like losing your shit, yeah. Like, let's go. Yeah. So 
and the moment like that for me and Jess Rosa that made me go, Jess Rosa cannot be that bad, <laughs> like ever, because of this moment. Was what? Was when, I thought oh, they didn't know what you're talking about. Was when Dofamingo was going. Mm -hmm. after <laughs> <laughs> it was when Duffy was going after the the Sunny, mm -hmm. the thousand years, the thousand Sunny, and Sanji coming in to block the attack. That was I was. That shit was fire, dude. Because I, I was not expecting that. Neither were you, right? Never. Sanji. I, I mean, you both both know this. Sanji has had many moments in the past where he stays quiet, he stays in the background, and I—that's the Sanji that I miss and that I love. Mm -hmm. The Sanji that stays in the back, waiting, Planning. waiting for that moment to yeah. just yeah. So like, a Basta, that dude just in the back, like, and even even little little garden too. That moment, I'm not mm -hmm. part of the fight, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm still gonna be a problem. Mm -hmm. What was his what was his nickname again? He called himself Mr. Prince or something. Mr. Prince. Yeah. And when he was in uh in, in Water 7, same Save them. Literally crazy. save them, dude. We haven't seen that Sanji in a minute. Mm -hmm. In a long minute. We, where is he? Where post he time go? skip, we talked about it in uh, I think Fishman or Punk. Post Fishman. time skip, yeah, Fishman. And post time skip, like he has a long segment of just ass. Like he just sucks. Uh, but then this yeah. this is the beginning this of something. The, <laughs> this was the moment that made me go, you know what, Sanji? <laughs> <laughs> You're back, man. <laughs> that was the moment that I literally got up. On. Let's go. I got like, so that, fucking hype. But then, like, and, you had them. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, go, go, go. I'll say you had him stopping him. And, like, they're trying to figure out what to do. Like, okay, Luffy said guard the ship. But Big Mom is, like, right fucking here, bro. <laughs> like, what do we do? Oh. And then Luffy has to make the call of, like, Get like go, get the fuck out, just do it, and then that made me go like, okay, so Sanji's now running shit, and they they have their own side show, Big Mom. There's so much happening right now. What is going on? Seeing, seeing, because obviously this is the point where like they just leave the story. It's, yeah, I don't, I don't really think of Nami Chopper, uh, Sanji when I think of Dress Rosa, but I think I, no one does, right, for the most part, because mm -hmm. they weren't, they weren't there. Yeah, but when that moment, then when they left, and you just see. Like that moment from Luffy trusting and Sanji Luffy and all of them to move, yeah. But little moments like that make you believe in this crew. Yes, dude. But not just that seeing Sanji just like he took up that responsibility, mm -hmm. like he was the captain. I remember the like, panel where he's holding the, the the transporter snail and talking to Luffy. I'm like, dude, this is a fire panel. It was like Sanji's leading, leading, bro. I love this. But I remember like <laughs> that just reading that I was losing my shit because I was like. Big Mom, Duffy, Coliseum, there's, there's too much going on, <laughs> like, are we gonna get, what are, what's going on with these guys, like, are we gonna get a chapter on them, and then we don't for several, several chapters, they just disappear, I'm like, fuck, we just don't know what's gonna happen to them, what the fuck? It's been a while, you don't see them again until, spoilers, uh, Zao is when you first hear about what happened, gone, and it was such a, like, to, to you, I know it must have been awful, but because I, I only found out maybe what like a couple weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> Me like, years. But, yeah. <laughs> but like seeing that the last thing that we saw of them was just facing Big Mom's army. Oh my god! It one of those things that I'm like, I, it motivated it motivated me to get through Joe's Frosa because I was like, I need to know what happened to Sanji, dude. I need to know what happened to Nami and all them dudes because didn't he ask? Didn't he ask some permission to fight back? I could have sworn Sanji yes. said, Luffy, yeah. do yes. I have your permission to engage against Big Mom? And I was like, oh, fuck. But dude, this is getting fire. Oh, that had me, that had me lose my mind. To me, I don't care. Out of all the major events of Dress Rosa, that is honestly probably number one to me. Like, Nothing easily number one for you? The hype from... It was so Sanji. real. I think, Sanji um... The last thing we should talk about before we break is um the the what's called Usopp uh Robin? Yeah, Usopp and Robin got sucked into that hole and they met all the fairy guys. Their side story and Operation SOP. <laughs> I think it was like Sugar Something Panic. I forgot what it stood for. But Dude, that pa that panel of what? Uh dwarves being on top of Robin's Yeah, uh, dude, that's just 
Yeah, Oda knows what he was doing. Like, Oda knows. I looked at that panel for a good minute, and I'm like, whoa, I can stay here for a fat minute. <laughs> I can stay here for 10 more minutes. Nah, I'm just like... Oh, so wait, oh, how's Rush Rosa going, huh? Oh, I, 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 yeah, no, a, ch a chapter like 789 is really good. Just wanna, just wanna stay here a little longer. I think wait, don't tell me you know the exact chapter. That's not the chapter. I don't, I don't <laughs> think it is. I, maybe I, it could be, but I don't I don't think I nailed it. I know Rush Rosa's in 700. I know that for a fact. Oh, yeah, yeah, 789 yeah, so might be way too late. It's, it's late, it's late, but that's so, that's so funny. <laughs> Anyway. That was a weird, uh, yeah. Yeah, I would have just kind of sure. sprinkled that in there. But you have um, those two, and Frankie too. All three of them kind of like fell in this like underground cavern, and you meet these uh, little, what are they called? The, the what men? What are they called again? Fuck. Uh, the Tata uh, oh. men? Tata men? I'm going I'm to keep calling them fairies for now. Sorry for diehard fans. I, I really can't be bothered to remember their name. But oh, are you looking it up? Yeah, let's just look it up. I'm, I'm gonna. It's gonna bother me because like, it, it was. It, it, it's. Do you even know their names? Like the the major ones, like the princess. Wasn't like Leo the main one? The the main one I think his name is Leo. But I don't remember the princess ones now. Oh, so. It was Leo, you know, right? So. Uh, yes, Leo. Um, yeah. Tantadas, the Tantadas. Tantadas. Okay, I was not gonna remember that. You know, you know what's crazy? So, uh, so we're introduced to, to the dwarves, uh, which is a, spe a race in the One Piece world, uh, and I didn't know this, but they were actually first mentioned all the way back uh, from Duval. Duval mentioned them. Isn't Duval? Duval was mentioned the dude them? that looks like Sanchi, Yeah, right? but he mentioned them. Yeah, he mentioned them. Um, he mentioned the dwarves. So it's really interesting that we're seeing they that, uh, like, obviously, so many chapters later, but... I didn't no, know that. Really I really did like, though, how, um, Dressrosa is built upon lies, and, like, this is one of them. And, like, little by little, we start revealing, like, the real truth behind what's going on in Dressrosa. I like... That was one of my favorite parts of Dressrosa, like, understanding how it got to this point. And it was cool, because in the beginning of the, ch of the arc, we hear about fairies, and they tell people... I mean, they tell Zoro, like... Your sword probably got taken by a fairy. And everyone's like normalizing. Like, what the fuck is a fairy? We find out fairies, but they're just calling these guys. And they actually used to be more like public in the eye of the people dressed Rosa. Wait, what's wrong? I thought you did this. No, you good? Oh, I thought you did this, my bad. No, no, no. I, I was going like... I was <laughs> actually... So like they used to be public and now they're more hidden away. And you learn about their struggle and how they've been completely suppressed and oppressed by like Dolphy's family. How like they're being used. Um, they have a, what was their one ability? Like, they can heal? I think they could heal, couldn't they? Or is that just the princess I, I, I who can heal? Only, that's the double fruit. That's double fruit, okay, never mind. But they still are very, like, strong for their size. Like, they actually have, like, capabilities. And the fact that, like, they're getting suppressed by the Don Flamingo family just shows how powerful the Don Flamingo family is compared to the natives who used to be there. So it's really cool meeting them. And then you also meet the Toy Soldier. And, like, initially when I met him, I thought Toy Soldier was just... A random toy that's supposed to be like the face of like I don't know the toys like this is like the one toy character is gonna help us through this, but then like finding out what the toys really are made me uh, lose my shit, bro. We will save that for part two, <laughs> dude. That was that was probably easy the biggest. I will get to it next, but like that is like the biggest what the fuck of the whole arc. I was like holy shit, I never would have guessed that. But agree. Yeah. we have Toy Soldier, we oh. have the Dwarves. Sorry, go ahead. I'm just going to say that I just find it absolutely hilarious that we went through an entire conversation uh -huh. of Dress Rosa. You didn't mention Rebecca once. I was going to do in the Coliseum segment, but I, it slipped my mind. I was thinking, I, when I was doing the character instructions, I was supposed to bring her up and I forgot. I think Rebecca is a good character. I just think the problem is like she's not really relevant. <laughs> I don't think she's really relevant until, um, until what's his face, until the toy soldier. I'm not going to say the name now because we're still in part one of our discussion, but until the toy soldier becomes who he is, that's when for me, Rebecca becomes relevant. Before that, I don't care about Rebecca. Listen, I'm just saying it's hilarious because the the anime goes so stupid. Oh, in terms yeah. Of oh, sho yeah. Shoving the importance. But when we have the, when we actually have a conversation of Dressrosa, we bring up, we don't bring up Rebecca until we have to. And that's not even, 
The only thing that we know about Rebecca so far in this point of our conversation is that she constantly gets booed by the people in the Coliseum and she's struggling really bad, like with just trying to um, save the country, but we don't know why. Or like, we just know Dolph Mingo's fucking up the country, but we don't know in what ways. All we know is she's trying her best for the people and the people don't know that. But it's, it's very just it's like weirdly vague. It's like, I feel for you, but not really because I don't understand what's going on. You know? And. And Rebecca needs to start wearing clothes. Yeah, what kind of gladiator wears just Oda? Oda's yeah, fucking was... crazy, dude. But um, yeah. Usopp and meets those guys. It's funny because the dwarves were already met by uh, Nolan, or yeah, Nolan, way way back. Yeah, calling back the Skype and I was like, wait, Nolan met these guys? What the fuck? That blew my mind. That was the moment that made me go, I need to reread Sky Skypea. <laughs> I was here like, there's no way that no one's going to get relevant again. No way. And then as soon as I see that, I'm like, there's a statue of this motherfucking bro. <laughs> but what I liked a lot was Usopp just doubling down. I'm like, oh, me and Nolan? Yeah, no, that was that was homeboy, oh, bro. Way back, bro. They call me <laughs> they call me uh Usopp Land, actually. Yeah, no, facts. I'm a big hero where I'm from. <laughs> oh, they he used to wipe my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and just seeing them like following it like yo, Usopp's the man. I was dying the whole fuck while reading that part. Yeah. And like the deeper and deeper they get into the lie, and they revealed that, like, okay, so. Yo, Usopp, because you're a hero, right? Hear us out. We need you. For years now, we've been planning a coup d'etat against the Flamenco and his men. And now that you're here, I think we finally have the resource to do this. What do you think? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's literally what it was. He was like, okay, it's kind of it's kind of biting me in the ass now. The lie is coming up. <laughs> Why am I like this? Why, am I like this? <laughs> Why can't I just tell the truth? I have a problem. Oh my god! But no, they yeah they come up with that SOP plan. I think uh, we can cut it here for now and get into how that plan unfolds next time. Yeah, this is a this was a lot in just the first part. And we still haven't gone over so many things in that first part. We skipped over a lot still, but I think we got the main plot points. (laughs) We got we got we got a good bit so far, but damn, just was so long dude We're, we still haven't got to any of the fights yet any of the confrontation this is all set up still dude i don't know uh, i know uh, maybe i should reread dress <laughs> anyway um that calls it for the first part of this discussion um for those interested we'll probably pump out the next part the week after this comes out where we'll move on from sop all the way to the end of dress rosa if you like what you saw or heard, please comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what you think about Tress Rose up to this half. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Peace.